is Monica, everybody. <laughs> Monica. Monica is part of the audience machine that we have every <laughs> night here. Monica, I found out before the show started, because we are live and I was just watching Dave, wasn't he good, that, um, <laughs> that Monica made a film. You made a film, didn't you, Monica? Yes, I did. It, Monica made a film. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, wait. You haven't seen it. <laughs> What's it about, Monica? Uh, it is a cop drama called Cruelty, and... Uh, Who's in it? My partner, actually, is in the audience. Oh, hello! Hi! Uh, that's my uh, co-producer, my co-writer, and the star of the movie. How come you're up here, then, and she's sitting up there? <laughs> that's going to cause a that's rift a between question. you later. They'll probably be have... You'll have to have some kind of pillow fight to sort that out, I'd imagine. <laughs> Think of me as your creepy uncle. I am. <laughs> so what's the... So you made the film, and now what's... When's it coming out? Uh, well, it's still in the process of being edited by my editor right Oh, there. right. This is a whole... The entire crew is yes. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, enough that, of that. So when's it coming out, then? We're hoping by the end of September, early October. And uh, will it be in an independent movie theater? Absolutely. <laughs> Now, here's why I was talking to Monica. I'll speak quietly so she doesn't know. <laughs> I used to work in independent film, and it's awful. <laughs> and what happens is you get older and creepier and more and more bitter. <laughs> until you end up this. <laughs> hosting a sort of, it's not even a late night talk show host thing, this, is it? I mean, really, let's be honest, but let's call it what it is, Pee Wee's Playhouse with no props. <laughs> <laughs> Low-budget stoner television. <laughs> Which is infinitely preferable to working in independent film. <laughs> But I'm very excited to go and see, what's it called, Creepy? <laughs> Cruelty. <laughs> go and see the movie Cruelty at, um, at that movie theater where everyone goes, what the hell is that movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, and what, is it, is it in, is it in uh, English? Yes. Well, there's a plus. <laughs> there's a plus. <laughs> and does it have any guinea pig spies in it? <laughs> I'm then sorry. I won't be going. <laughs> Save it, save it, save it. We've got a very weak show. You're going to be... You're going to be terribly disappointed. But I'm not disappointed. And I'll tell you why. I have never seen a more attractive studio audience in my life. Not to say they're not gullible, but they are attractive. <laughs> Some of the ladies, too. It's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. Today, a very historic anniversary today. It's on days like this. We should remember history, so we're doomed not to repeat it. It was on this day in 1914, World War I, World War I started... <laughs> Oh, that's right. Laugh at World War I, you bastard. 
But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about another historic event. On this day in 2006, this was the day Mel Gibson went nuts. <laughs> and the, do we have a graphic for Mel Gibson going nuts to remember the day? Uh, Mel Apocalypse with Superman. There he goes. All right, please. I, uh, I told... <laughs> I, I told you it was a weak show. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like yesterday, but only three years ago today, Mel Gibson went from being slightly crazy to very crazy indeed. <laughs> the traditional three-year anniversary gift is leather, so I'm getting Mel a muzzle. <laughs> now, there's happier news uh, today. This is the day I've been waiting for uh, all year. <laughs> And in South America, they've been looking forward to it all year. That's right, it's Peruvian Independence Day, everybody. Yeah. Hooray! Yeah. We got a graphic for Peruvian Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On this day in 1821, Peru declared independence from the Spanish. Now, they had been dominated by the Spanish conquistadors for a long time. I know how they feel. <laughs> Call me Antonio Banderas. I've never... I've never been to Peru, but I hear it's lovely. Do we have a map of Peru? Let's have a look where it's... Uh, yeah, there, Peru. The Andes, there's the Andes there. And see you board. Now, look, now, that's true. Lake Titicaca is a real place. I know, it's not awesome. What will we call this lake? Lake Titicaca. Oh, okay. I would love to go there. <laughs> I would take a motorboat. <laughs> By the way, Lake, Lake Titicaca is one of the world's great comedy locations. There's Lake Titicaca, there's uh, Intercourse, Pennsylvania, <laughs> and uh, Bonerville, Kentucky. That's uh, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Might be a town, shut up. Uh, <laughs> Now, the biggest tourist attraction in Peru is uh, Machu Picchu. It's called the Lost City. There's no lost cities in the US. Some people wish we could lose Reno, but that's just mean. I don't believe in that. Machu Picchu is very high up in the mountains. You have to climb up to see it. It's very popular if you're one of those athletic people that like to show off by doing stuff. <laughs> that's my new judgy face. What do you think? See you like to do stuff. <laughs> I like it. I'm going to use this. This is going to be my new superpower. <laughs> yes, Machu Picchu. You've got to climb all the way up to it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I hope to experience zero times. But that's—it's that's, all climbing upstairs. I don't. Once they get an elevator, I'll go. What? When uh, people go to Machu Picchu, they have a very difficult time breathing because it's very high altitude. The same thing used to happen to Tom Cruise when he kissed Nicole Kidman. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. It was a joke. It was only a joke. I'm kidding. Tom Cruise never kissed Nicole Kidman. <laughs> So empowering. Everyone should try this. All of America, I want you to open up your windows and go like this. <laughs> Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu was built by the Incas. Now, the Incas are very fascinating people who ultimately vanished because they couldn't adapt to modern times. They were like the Aztecs or the Mayans or the Baldwins. They just couldn't do it. <laughs> do you know what's off the coast of Peru? Easter Island. Yep. <laughs> I'd actually like to visit Easter Island. The Easter Island has those giant statues with the huge freaky statuettes with the huge heads and the enormous chins. Can we see a picture of one of those things? Yeah, you look. <laughs> look at that thing now. <laughs> you see that again? Yeah. <laughs> Looks vaguely familiar, doesn't it? On a clear day, you can see the... the, 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 the. 
<laughs> uh, anyway, it's Peruvian Independence Day. Now, on this uh, day of Peruvian Independence, we should reflect on all the great things that uh, Peru has given us. Like, uh, uh, coffee. Coffee comes from Peru. People... No, wait, wait. Don't applaud coffee. <laughs> line <laughs> did the professional warm-up comedian say that you have to applaud coffee if I mention coffee <laughs> or just any noun if you hear any noun you know what that does that makes me angry <laughs> now you don't want to get me angry studio audience because when I go oh, I'm gonna do it there we go That's my workout for the day. <laughs> Coffee, yes, I've had a lot of it tonight. Now, uh, Peruvians were also the first people to domesticate the potato. Ah, yes, before that, potatoes ran wild, killing people with a, <laughs> their vicious potato attacks. <laughs> potatoes everywhere, looking at you with their terrible eyes. <laughs> has given us one terrible thing, though, something that's really awful, the uh, Peruvian pan flute players. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, the guys with the... Do, 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 <laughs> I'd rather listen to Simon and Garfunkel than hear the Peruvian flute version. <laughs> and I like listening to Simon and Garfunkel as much as I like getting my nipples caught in a bear trap. <laughs> Which actually... <laughs> I kind of quite like. <laughs> Call me Antonio Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be right back. Independence Day show where we, we've gone Peruvian independence crazy. Yeah. Don't ever say yeah to that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to do acting because there's filmmakers in the audience. So you know, I might I might be a bit more hammy than usual. Is that possible? <laughs> So I might do a bit more acting tonight in order to impress the filmmakers. <laughs> I think there's been a murder. <laughs> do you know what? You know, uh, when Angela Lansbury was doing that, um, that thing that we sometimes do on the show, I think there's been a murder. What was it? Murder of an angel or something, was it? Murder, she wrote. Yeah, it was touched by an angel, wasn't it? Touched, <laughs> <laughs> touched by the angel of death. Um, no, there was... Because uh, I was thinking she always turned up in a little guest house and then um, somebody got murdered. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a detective, but there's certainly a pattern there. <laughs> anyway, it's Peruvian Independence Day. You know where the most popular food is in Peru? I googled this today. Guinea pig. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've, tr I've, I've tried guinea pig. I've tried it. It reminds me of beaver. I'm kidding. I am kidding. <laughs> kidding. I've never eaten guinea pig. <laughs> in Peru, right, they eat 60, 65 million guinea pigs a year. I know. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of guinea pigs. And they have it in all different ways. Uh, they, they serve a uh, guinea pig. Uh, they serve the guinea pig in uh, the, in the plates. They, they, you can get it, guinea, guinea, guinea pigs in a blanket. You can get that. Can get, uh, hot, guinea pig hot pockets. you got your guinea pig Newtons. You've got a... Uh, you, <laughs> you can have your uh, I can't believe it's not hamster. You can get everything. You know, if I had a movie coming out now, though, I'd want guinea pigs to be in it, because that's what everybody wants. The guinea pig movies, that's the big movie now. <laughs> <laughs> e 
everybody's talking about that guinea pig movie. Everywhere else in the world, the, that movie makes people laugh, they enjoy it, you know, pigs solve crimes, guinea pigs solve crimes. But in Peru, it just makes them hungry. <laughs> And do you know what? I've seen the trailer for the movie. I've seen the movie five times. And uh, one of the guinea pigs says in the movie, Yippee Kaye Coffee Maker. <laughs> and I'm like, that is fantastic. A really good substitute for a really bad word. Because everybody knows what word they're replacing. You get, get these coffee making snakes off of my coffee making plane. <laughs> I'm going to use it from now on. All right, we have to take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the big... Uh, Do we have time for email? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this is from Kevin in Loganville, Wisconsin. Uh, Kevin says, uh, Dear Craig, if a product claims to kill 99.9% .9 of germs, wouldn't the germs left be the strongest and deadliest? <laughs> P.S. You should really try, try cheese curds. Uh, <laughs> Really is from Wisconsin then. I I would try cheese curds, but they contain the 0.1% of germs that survive. I don't, is, did they still say that? Does that company advertise on CBS? Kills 99, they do now. <laughs> this is from Virginia in Blackwell, Oklahoma. Uh, Virginia says, Dear Craig, the local librarians need a judge for our taffy pool. Are you available? <laughs> What's a taffy pool? I, I actually grew up no, in Oklahoma. What is a... What is a taffy pool? Does anyone know what a taffy pool is? You, you, you pull taffy? What do you need a judge for that for? That's just... You, to see who pulls taffy the best? That's what the competition is? <laughs> I can't judge your taffy pull. I can't even hit the desk. I'm losing the power of shunning. There you go. <laughs> taffy pool, eh? I don't know. Did you see a you pull taffy? You just eat taffy. <laughs> Seems pointless pulling taffy. All right, this is from Rachel in in Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say it. It's from Rachel. Rachel says, Dear Craig, how can I become a dancer for your opening sketch routines? Well, that's quite easy. First thing you've got to do is drink tequila. Um, obsessively for about 20 years. Oh, no, that's me. Um, no, I think, um, I, I don't know. We don't have dancers. We just have people who work around the here. You know, they come in and they dance around. But it's not proper dancers. It's not like, so you think you can dance, or that new one, dance, you fat bastard. What's the name of that show? Um... When they get fat people and go, ah, dance, and they're like, ah, ha, ha, ha. what is that show? That's cruel, that show. I hate that. You know what they're saying? They're empowering fat people. Ooh la la. They're empowering fat people. They're not. They're laughing at fat people and making them dance. And then they're laughing at them because they're fat and they've got tiny little feet like hooves. And making them dance. That's not right. It's not right. <laughs> All right, this is from Jessica in Farmingdale, or in Maine. 
Jessica says, hey, Craig, so I'm 14 and have been watching you for a couple of years and just found out that two other members of my family secretly watch you, but we don't talk about it. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's something blocked out by the censor. What does it say? So we don't talk about it. I'm sorry you're so lame. You're sorry I'm lame. <laughs> Acting. We out of time? You're out of time. I don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> You're out of time. One, one night, you'll be right out of time. Right out of time. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to go and get a job. Uh, Jason in Rochester, New York says, Dear Craig, my dog is pregnant. Do you want a puppy? No, I don't want a puppy, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> i got three dogs now. Three dogs. Three of the fartiest dogs in the world. <laughs> German Shepherd. Big sausagey fartness. <laughs> Jack Russell, aggressive little Irish drunken fartiness. <laughs> and a French bulldog, the smell that comes out of that dog! <laughs> There's somebody that enjoys cheese curds. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the big show where it only remains for me to say we haven't really even started yet. <laughs> if you've made it this far, you know, if you know anything about the show, you know the crap bit is over and now the guests start coming out. And <laughs> things will get better now. It's less about me going, oh, look at me. <laughs> oh, I'm Scottish. Oh, hi, chicken monkey. <laughs> <laughs> My first guest tonight is the chief international correspondent for CNN. What the hell is she doing here? <laughs> the new documentary Generation Islam premieres August the 13th. Take a look at this. With his father too ill to work, <laughs> Anwar is the sole support for his family. <laughs> he never has any time for fun but he's about to get some today. This is Skaterstan, a program that lets children be just children. Please welcome the very lovely Christiane Amanpour, everybody. It's so nice to be here. I'm very glad you're here. Now, the last What's time I saw up? you... Uh, we don't need that. Uh, that's, uh, the last time I saw you, you probably didn't... Well, you probably saw me, but we didn't talk. I was at the White House Correspondence. I saw you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you yeah. were in the audience. Yes, I was, and I, you were very good. Uh, no, no, I wasn't. <laughs> but I do confess I did look down your top. Did you? Are you doing that now? No, no, no I'm not okay, doing okay. it now. Yeah. I've gone past all that part of my life. I'm, you know, but they, right then I was standing... Uh, the president was there, and I went... I look down your top. Was it a good top? Yeah, uh, I can't remember. I, uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, tell me about the uh, kids in, where is that, Iran? That's Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what we decided to do was look at the next generation of Muslims around the world. Okay. President Obama saying, you know, new step forward, turn the page with the Muslim world, and that America can't afford to have the next generation seeing 
America as the enemy. Right. So we went out to check out the young people, whether they were kids, adolescents, young 20s, people trying to get jobs. We went to Afghanistan, a little in Pakistan, Gaza and the West Bank. And really what we found was extraordinary and actually very hopeful. Skaterstan is a little, a little sort of uh, snapshot of how who, who did that people then? Who want put to that be together, a, a young Australian called Perkovich, and he uh, basically just one one name like Sting. I know, it, yeah. I know, really <laughs> came from Yugoslavia. Obviously, went to uh, to Australia and now into Afghanistan. A big journey, a little bit like I don't know oh, Peru yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. whatever, and. Um, and he decided that kids needed something more than just to be trapped in this prison of hopelessness and emptiness. And right. he gave these little kids an, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of fun. What's the infrastructure like in Afghanistan? Because I think a lot of people think of Afghanistan as like desert terrain and, and fighting. And there is that yeah. going on, of course. Yeah. But, but the, the towns exist. Like that city there, it was... You That's know, Kabul, the, the capital. Right. You know, I come from Iran, I was raised in Iran, and right. I remember back in the 70s, friends of mine used to go to Kabul as a vacation spot. Imagine really? that, yes, it was beautiful, it still is actually, it, the air is nice, there's hunting, there's polo, oh, there's, hunting, there's all, all right. of that yeah, kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Different hunting in yeah, those days. Yeah, yeah. And so it really is actually beautiful. It is one of the most beautiful places I've been. On the other hand, there are areas that are unlivable, that right. are very dangerous, particularly for journalists. You know, the New York Times yeah. correspondent, months and months being kidnapped by the Taliban do you to ever escape. Do you ever worry about that I when do. you go there? I do worry, actually, more and more, because more and more, the bad guys, no matter what country they're in, they really want to shut down the message. Therefore, shut down the messenger, which basically means kidnapping, killing, wounding, throwing Well, that would out. be the normal Very extension difficult. of what the bad guys have always done. Like, Stalin shut down everything from Russia. The, you, the, the Chinese communists shut yes. down everything after Tiananmen Square. Everybody, to, for, for these kind of guys to succeed, they have to stop anything coming in from That's the outside. That's absolutely right? right. But the problem is that now it's really physical targeting of journalists, deliberate targeting. The Committee to Protect Journalists right. says that now for the umpteenth year in a row, the leading cause of death for journalists is deliberate. In other words, people murdering us. Wow. Yeah. That's the leading cause of death for journalists, which well, is maybe, slightly skewed maybe from the Maybe it's normal time population. to, you know, fly a desk in <laughs> Washington or something like that. I mean, well, is, you know, is it time to slow down a bit? Or are well, you still I don't drawn know about slow down because I'm still, you know, in love with being in the field. That's my passion. That's right. my commitment. That's what I just adore. But I am going to be starting a program uh, in September, September 21st, which will bring, hopefully, all that I've learned in the field over 20 years right. into a studio setting and do interviews, go more in-depth, more context, more perspective. Is this about uh, uh, about motherhood as well as the fact you have a young child now and you feel kind of uncomfortable going yeah. there? You know, you know as well what it's like to be the parent of a young child. I, I do, but I, I don't go into dangerous well, areas. The true. most dangerous area I go to is perhaps Hollywood Boulevard. Well, which, which can be dangerous. <laughs> if, um, you're, if, you, if you know the places to go. <laughs> you know, I guess what I do is extreme. I used to shield my son from it, and I still do, in that he doesn't watch television, he doesn't watch television news, he didn't know where I was going. I remember once, my little boy, I said to him when we were on vacation, I said, you know, you are mummy's favorite little traveling companion. He said to me, but mummy, then why don't you take me to Afghanistan and Iraq? Oh, yeah. And you know, so I had to say, well, no, I can't do that. But now, you know how boys are, they quite like guns and things like that. So when I tell yeah. him I go to war, and what does he feel about it, he thinks it's cool. But I do have to be careful. Obviously, much more careful than I used to be. Were you very cavalier about it when you were younger? You know, I tell you the truth, I've thought a lot about this. I think it's a function of age, I think it's a function of experience, I think if you look at the soldiers today, there's an, it's not an accident that the main people fighting the wars are young, young people. It They're, was always that way, yeah. Precisely. Yeah. I think because when you're young, you have a sense of immortality a yes. little bit, Infallib not infallibility, immortality and, and, and you're invulnerable. But I think as you grow older you get more sensible and you know much more, you know, how... You get crankier as well because if you look at that... <laughs> you no, I, I've noticed I've got, I shook my fist at the audience earlier. Yeah, I saw I'm not, that. I'm not proud I of saw it. that. I'm not proud of it. But I think what happens, you know, whenever they, there's a, a, a call-up, whenever, the, you know, the, there's a draft, mm -hmm. for any army, any time in the world, they always draft the young men first, because yep. older people are like, go fight it yourself, I'm not going. That's exactly you right. Know, That's exactly You get crankier right. and you get uh, and less you know. likely. Yes. You know what's on the other end. And I also think, you know, I'm 47 now, I start thinking, I can't believe I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing the odds <laughs> for me. You know, I mean, Thank <laughs> you.
It kind of, I get a little nervous about it. And I don't do much. Why? Talk show host on. Yeah. But that's all. But hey, you know, you're over it. <laughs> you can do that again if you like. Do you ever wonder when, uh, because you, you, as you say, you're from Iran, but it was, that was before the revolution yeah. in 70... 79. 79. My father's Iranian. Right. My mom's English. I grew up and was raised in Iran. And that's really been a big help because obviously we left at a certain period. I came to the United States to go to university, to join CNN 26 years ago nearly. Does, is it difficult to keep your, I mean, you must have a feeling about this, though, well, about this country. This is, you know, it's, it's right. in your blood. It is. And I've been covering it for 20 years. But I just think speaking the language, knowing the culture, knowing people there has really helped me as a correspondent sure. because it means that I can get beyond the stereotype and get behind the headline and the cliche and show a different side, a different perspective, which is what we've tried to do in Afghanistan. What about Afghanistan. your own politics, though? Do you, do you find yourself in accord with Ahmadinejad or are you perhaps... Uh, what do you think? I don't see you as a big Ahmadinejadi. You uh, know... <laughs> you know... I know it's very fashionable and trendy to wear your politics on your sleeve right now. Right. But I just don't. Good for you. I just don't. And I feel, to be very honest with you, that, that if I went and, and, and treated every story through my own political lens, then how's anybody to know what's, what's true, or at least as close to the objective well, that's truth? Well, that's what journalists used to do. Right. Cronkite, you, you're never this quite sure about Cronkite. I mean, I, I, and your, your career looks a little bit like Cronkite's as well, well if you know. I mean, the... the the, uh, you know, going into the field, going into dangerous situations and then come, and doing what you're doing now, coming back and, and, well, and using that uh, in the anchor chair. You're really flattering me, but he is obviously a role model for that precise reason. Not because he became famous and a great anchor, but because of all the things he did to get there and field and reporting was it. Yeah. And his integrity, his credibility. Um, I sought him out a few years ago because I really oh, just wanted to meet him. Oh, yes, gosh, I wanted to meet him. I wanted to talk to him about some of the incredible things that he did, whether it was about the Vietnam War, whether it was when he got his start in World War II. You know, there's something about war and being in a dangerous situation and, and, and feeling like you're part of a band of brothers and sisters that's really bonding. I mean, you've really seen the well, extreme I side that when of I life. Talk, whenever I talk to uh, <laughs> troops uh, who have been hurt in the field, yeah. When you go to Walter Reed or, yeah. or any of the other uh, places, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, overseas, that every everyone, without exception, wants to get back. They do. Wants to get back yeah. to their company. They really do. They really do. And there's something really special about that. Yeah. And he was so special. And I think we really will miss him, even though journalism has changed so much. Tell he me. still remem remains, yeah. for me, uh, a role model. He so is. I really want to thank him, ask him, you know, what he did and how he did it. And he was great. I'd love great. to hear that. Uh, we're completely out of time. Uh, will you come back and see us again? Love to. It's not very dangerous here. It's pretty dangerous. <laughs> not dangerous, though. Christiane Amanpour, everybody. We'll be right back. My, uh, my next guest is the star of The Big Bang Theory, uh, which is Mondays on uh, CBS. Oh, yeah, I like them. All right, take a look. <laughs> Okay, I have just one question for you. While I am perfectly happy with the way things are between us, you said that you didn't want to go out with me because I was too smart for you. Well, newsflash, lady. David Underhill is ten times smarter than me. You'd have to drive a railroad spike into his brain for me to beat him at checkers. <laughs> Next to him, I'm like one of those sign language gorillas who knows how to ask for grapes. <laughs> so, my question is, what's up with that? Please welcome Johnny Galecki, everybody. Johnny Galecki. Beardy Thank weirdy, you. look I at know. you. I'm sorry, I must apologize for my appearance. It looks fantastic. Yeah, I don't look like a Muppet junkie or anything like that. <laughs> yes, okay, you is do. That the new book? Uh, and that's fantastic. <laughs> it, no, it's really, it's very dashing. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's you look as if you could be almost Belgian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
You must have heard I was born in Belgium. I, I did you on the yeah. Wikipedia today. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> says you're Belgian. That can't be true, of course. No, it's not true. All right. Well, no, yeah. not at all. No, I'm not of Belgian descent. I, um, but I was born there on an Air Force base. That makes you Force. Belgian to me, mister. All right, let's go with it. No, it no, does you... sound... It's, there's something sexy about that. It's I good. Like it. you could be I need the... that with a beard. Yeah, I'll take it. Let's go. Why have you got a beard, anyway? It's for the first episode of this coming season. Uh, which I don't know how much I can divulge about. And then also I was up in New York doing a play with your buddy, uh, 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 Louis Black. Oh, I love Louis Black. Yeah, he's a he's fantastic not, playwright. It, he wrote the play? I didn't know that either. Yeah, he wow. wrote the play. He wrote the play? Yeah. Louis writes plays? I'd, I'd go figure. D did he grow up you in You know Louis from The Daily Show? <laughs> Louis Black. That guy. You know, this is Louis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's Louis. I, I love Lewis. He's very, very clever. Too. He didn't grow a beard, too, did he? No, he did not. All right, good. That's I should have asked him to. No. Yeah. Was, was he in the play or did he just write he it? He just wrote it. So he was just, just saying, that's not how you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty fun. What was yeah. the play about? It was about a wedding gone awry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It's called Slight Hitch. He's a very, very good writer. He, yeah, no, he's very clever. Yeah. yeah. And he told me to tell you that he and I spent two weeks together in upstate New York and that we did not get arrested, which I don't know. Uh, what, uh, there was a little bit of racketeering going on, but other than that, I don't know if that had more to do with your history. Did you meet in prison or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. He, we met was, in prison. Yeah, all right. We shared a cell. Yeah. <laughs> and love. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so listen, you know him better than I. The, uh, the, the Big Bang Theory, yes. which uh, is, it, that's the, all the rage with the kids now. It's the, it's the number one show on TV. It's Did you a, know that? I didn't number, know yeah, that. Yeah, it's the number one show, not just true? in America, but in the world. I knew it was number one in Latin America. No, we it, ev down. everywhere okay, in the I'm gonna, world. I everywhere like in the world. All right, and in America. American Idol now is in like People fourth don't place. Yeah, they don't even watch it anymore. It's, it's really caught on. It's fantastic. We were just in Comic-Con. Thank you very much. You went where, sorry? Comic-Con. In San Diego, it's a massive convention, oh, yes. and uh, it was our second year there, and it's just amazing, the fans that come out, it's thousands and thousands of fans. It's a oh, it's because you play geeks on the show, and sometimes geeks like science fiction? Well, <laughs> that's what I was worried about last year. I thought it was a terrible idea to take the show down there, and this right. is one of the many reasons that I should never be in public relations. I thought it was a horrible idea, and that because these are very serious collectors, that they would kind of run us out of town, because it's that nerd show coming and they assumed that we're geeks and but it was the exact opposite they were like thank you for uniting us and <laughs> thousands of people people turned down i mean it's just the most effusive supportive environment are you are you are you quite geeky because you don't look very geeky with your beard and your eyebrows and everything no. yeah you look like <laughs> you're quite macho looking i suspect you probably uh you know I chop have logs my, or have a geeky, motorcycle yeah. or something <laughs> i do have a motorcycle see yes. don't you there there you are yeah. motorcycle and you used to ride or do you still ride? i still have a motorcycle oh, do you? I, I don't go on it you anymore a, i'm too uh, afraid someone told me the indian are you really did you have a close call or no you know what i have oh no i i had an accident oh you did yeah yeah i came out i was it was wasn't on my bike oh, i wouldn't crash my bike it's a great bike <laughs> i but i borrowed another bike from someone else and i uh, and had an accident broke my collarbone three ribs oh see that'll do it oh it was and sore you have a son now too so that's you know i'm trying yeah, to get I'm, it out of and my I have a father so I, it's yeah. the whole kind of trying not to encourage him to ever get on a motorcycle ever yeah i yeah. spent some time doing that this summer too i rented one and went through uh the lakes in wisconsin didn't try cheese curds oh uh, we, i don't i don't know why one would with the word curd, curd. yeah i know <laughs> I can't really think of a more unappealing word. For no, a no, snack. no, no, no. Curds are, are lovely. There are curds. There are people who are called curds. Oh, well, that's yeah, different. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're looking like a racist now. <laughs> it's a very different. See, you seemed very knowledgeable about geography in the, during the monologue, but I, I, did, I didn't know that Lake Titicaca was a real place either. Yeah, that's I a learned real place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's Lake Titicaca, and, uh, but you can't get cheese curds there. That's all right. <laughs> Or maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, you never know. We'll have to go and see. <laughs> that you, you struck you, gold with. Yeah, yeah that's know, good. I'm, I'm stealing that. Yeah. That's going to be in season three on the show, absolutely. Well, that means people will see it. That's a good point. If I do it, <laughs> if I do it here, it remains a secret. <laughs> Johnny, we're, we're completely out of time. Listen, good luck with the next season. Uh, the oh, show is so fantastic. Much. It just gets better and better and better. And, and give our best to, to everybody on the cast. We'll and and we'll, see, we'll see you soon. Johnny Galecki, everybody. Johnny Galecki, everybody. <laughs> What did we learn on the show tonight?
my grave. <laughs> 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 I can't, I can't talk anymore. We talked too long. I'm completely out of time. It only remains for me to say. 